Welcome to Connecting Communities, a collaboration between people in Syracuse, New York, Bloomfield, New Jersey, and Makanda, South Africa. Connecting Communities provides people on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean an opportunity to learn more about one another through conversation. And to see, despite the 8,000 miles between us, we're more alike than we are different. This podcast is supported by the John Ben Snow Memorial Trust. For more information, go to unkululeko.com dot org slash podcast let's go one can share about their cultures share of of their of how they were and like share anything about your cultures but i wish to go first i'm a closer person a closer person yeah so like in my culture singing is one of the best way to express ourselves because like when we feel something, we just put it into music, you see? And like the way we wear things, we just take beats and put creativity on them and just put them on our skin. And that represents us as closer people. And that's one of the beautiful things because like nobody can ever try to, to, to represent us because of we we unique in a way that no one can ever try to be unique in that way. Oh, okay. Um, so when we are talking about culture in South Africa, we are a rainbow nation. Um, there is a lot of diverse cultures that we we have here, and here on the floor we are mainly the Kosa culture. So um, we know more of Kosa culture, in as much as we have other cultures that um we do encounter, but we are we are Kosa. So we'll be talking about. Um, our lifestyle. We'll be talking about the food that we eat. Um, if it was possible, we are going to have pictures so that you guys can see um, what we we really really um, eat. Um, we have we have heard a number of people coming from America to South Africa that we have met, and they really enjoyed the food that we eat. And they always say this: it's fresh. Um, because you guys at the state eat more of processed food a lot and also fast foods. And so that, uh, so now when they were t- tasting meat uh, from the side, they were saying it's fresh. And yes, it is fresh because um, we we grow the cattle the side and then we slaughter and then we indulge, you know. So um, one of the main things that I've experienced with you guys is the food. We always get a compliment when we're talking about the food that we have um, as tosses, that we make great food and it's always fresh. Uh, to add, to add on, on what he said about um, the Kosa culture, singing a lot. Yeah, we do sing a lot, guys. We sing a lot. We dance a lot. We... <laughs> Um, we sing a lot, especially in our own language. Um, we do drama. We like more creative in a way. Like we're such creatives. Um, not that I'm like being uh, I don't know, being sassy or whatever. But I'm just stating facts. Um, we sing a lot. Um, we dance a lot. We love wearing our traditional attires a lot. We embrace ourselves. Um, for who we are, as the Kosa culture and. I just feel like we embrace ourselves a lot to a point whereby we feel like we dominate in South Africa, you know. Um, One of those powerful tribes, we're very dominant um, and we just carry ourselves differently. We have these um, morals and uh, values that we carry with ourselves that are very much different um, from other cultures. Um, We're very complimented a lot on our values because of the way that we were raised by our parents um yeah that's basically about us not that everything about closest is good no but i'm just like saying and telling you guys about our culture so can you guys like share something about american culture like what would i expect to experience if i ever came there I feel like cla- I don't really know classic American culture, but when I think of like classic American foods, I feel like burgers, fries, things like that. I don't know. Really- so like the values in our culture, I don't know much of it, but the little that I do know about my culture is that it's like similar to how Miranda said that we value our families, we value like 
you can never really trust anyone outside of the family as you could with your family. And also like, we're like, in my culture, we're very romantic. We like to sing a lot and play songs and instruments. What culture is it? Oh, it's Ecuadorian culture. And uh, our food is like typical Hispanic food, but there's like a variation on it that we don't really use salt or pepper. We just, oh. Um, I would like to share something about my culture, which is awesome. Um, for us, there are different stages that you have to go through as a person. Cause like you get to be a boy to being a man, you see? Yeah, at the age of 18 years old. But then you don't just get to be a man. You have to go to the bush. Um, for a month, um and when you go there, it's called you there to initiate. Um, so what happens there, you are being taught of how to be a man and how you are expected to behave when you go out and how to treat yourself as a person that you're going to be calling yourself a man. Um, and as girls, girls just grow up, but then they are taught values and how to wear and how to be like on the streets. Cause like many children of now are going out proving um, they, they don't, obey their parents and that sides could like somewhere somehow kids are getting pregnant and it's not funny <laughs> they are getting pregnant which is contributing to teenage pregnancy and it's a and it's something that's constantly growing and could like you you get to see someone that you go that you grew up with having a child having to go breastfeed and that's a lot to take in. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm still curious. I'd like to know about your cultures. You know, can anybody share something? Okay, I will. I go um at least once a year back to Albania, so I'm kind of like really fresh on what we do and so we are we, we have a kind of little, little, a combination of um, middle eastern and mediterranean so like greece and turkey is really combined into albanian culture and i don't know if you know anything about uh, the valet which is like very um common in um, middle eastern dances or like arab dancing we do that all the time every wedding there's so many variations of valet and we also have like the best food we have we also like um like you said we have very fresh food like it's not really processed over there but it is really heavy, so you have to kind of get used to how much, like, you eat at one serving. So, and yeah, that's basically it. Oh, sorry. Oh, like, I forgot something about our culture as closer people. Oh, like, as as closer as people, like, we treat everyone as family. Because, like, I can see, like, in my area, like, in the place where I live, um... Nobody is a foreigner. No, no, nobody is a person that we don't know. But if a person comes and doesn't have something, my mother does have to share. And if she doesn't have something, like it's some kind of a thing like that, you see. And then I forgot something else. Um, when when a person goes to initiate, there is a ceremony called Humkiti, whereby everyone everyone comes and rejoices for the person that that is being transformed from being a boy to a man like in the ceremony you they like people get to have alcohol meat and like it is just a fun ceremony where, where, where by everyone drinks and rejoices for the boy um, coming out as a man <laughs> uh i had a quick follow-up question what's the legal age of drinking in south africa Okay, so um, the legal age for drinking in South Africa is 18, but but they started early. Well, let me say they start early, early. They go poor. So you guys, when 
when is it eligible for you guys to have, you know? 21. 21. Wow. 21. wow. Nobody, nobody follows that. Well, I 16 I on a Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think I think in South Africa, um I think in South Africa uh, it's a pandemic because they start at a very early age. We have like um children starting at 10 years drinking because of the society that we live in because it's not something they respect everyone is drinking i am going to talk i'm talking about the place that we live in in makanda south africa everyone drinks if you want to have fun you drink there's nothing that you can do without drinking so and for that we don't even have places where we can take um our children maybe in the park for playing we don't have places like that so the only thing that they use most of the times is drinking and i think the children see that um seeing my my family most of my family members indulging in um alcoholic beverages they think that is the right thing to do and they really start at an early age well here it's 21 but i feel like are you like Younger people get a little, just a little taste before then. I wouldn't say that they like drink as much <laughs> as you, you made it seem there, but I feel like drinking is like more normalized at like the ages of like maybe eight, like underage drinking is more normalized, probably like 18, maybe like 17, but I would say probably like 18 to 20 because at that age, you know, we're good. Like, if we're in college at parties, there's gonna be drinks and stuff like that. So, and it's not like, I mean, obviously there's people that are of age, but yeah, that's why I think everybody probably gets like a little taste before they turn 21. I wanna talk about Somali culture in Syracuse. We have like a very big population of Somali people out like in Syracuse and almost every single Somali person you meet is Muslim. But in ITC, like our school, there's like maybe one or two Somali people besides me, but I would say Somali people are very loud. They like to have fun. They're very gossipy, but we have like a very strong sense of like community, if that makes sense. Like when I step outside and or I'm in trouble, I can turn to like people I don't even know, but they're Somali. Like we have just like a unspoken bond between each other. And about like the whole Americanized, like what's like an American view of like, in Syracuse, I think something that a lot of people struggle when they like people of color struggle with when they come to America is sometimes there isn't that community. Because when I first came to ITC, I struggled a lot because there weren't a lot of Muslim students here or any barely any Somali students. So it was really hard for me to like because I came from like a school where there was like a lot of people. So it was really hard for me to like talk to people at first. And eventually I didn't make more friends, but I think people lose their culture and their identity a lot when they come to America because America, although they, although they say it's a melting pot, they only really tolerate maybe like four cultures and everybody else kind of just spreads out. African American. Um, so our food, like the food that my mom cooks is not as like, it's not fresh or anything. I, like she gets fresh cabbage and stuff like that maybe collard greens and she makes them May, maybe it is fresh but it's not it's not healthy it's not healthy <laughs> she fries pork chops she fries chicken she fries ribs like she fries cabbage it's it's a lot of different foods <laughs> that's that's what I like so I'm not trying to say that it's it's not nasty or anything. It's good, but it's like very high sodium, and it's not good to have a, a lot of at like every day of the week. But when she does cook, that's what we eat. Um, I also want to add on. I feel like one thing that is very common is like like she said, it's not it's not like you're not supposed to eat that food a lot because it's so high in sodium. I feel like we mainly eat it on Sundays. Like it's always that Sunday you get your big like Sunday dinner. But I would just want to add on. Um, yeah, my I, I would say that a lot of the things personally that my mom makes is fresh. Like, like, like she doesn't really get lots of like canned stuff and lots of like more processed things. 
And I don't, I don't know, that's just might be how I was brought up. But to add on, my family has a restaurant. We have a soul food restaurant. So we make like all the soul foods, mac and cheese, collard greens, and really like just any soul food you could think of, chicken, ribs, pork chops, just everything. And I work there from time to time. And I could say there's a there's a large population of people like me who comes and buys the food all the time. We do that on Fridays and Saturdays, but also we do like breakfast, but it's not, those aren't really like soul foods. They're just like, well, I guess they're more like Southern yeah. breakfast foods, but yeah, that's really it. It is like, I would say that the food is like, like really heavy though. So honestly, I cannot eat like a lot of it. You kind of just have to get like a little bit of everything. As close as we love meat, I don't want to lie. We can have a meal, just meat only. And then, um, yeah, we love meat. We love it a lot. Uh, most of the occasions, if your occasion or whatever you are having, you don't have meat, uh, it was not a success. We need to have meat. We need to see it. We love it so much. So uh, we, it, <laughs> it's our, what do you call? It's our... Um, no, not that. I just forgot the word, but it's our one of those um, food that makes us as crosses. You know, we love meat so much. Even um, the customs that we celebrate, um, we we slaughter the uh, meat, we slaughter cattle, we slaughter goats. We sla there's it's meat involved. It's just meat involved. So we eat a lot of meat, but um, um, the advantage is that it's fresh. You know, you just. Uh, get um, cattle that you've grazed yourself and then you just slaughter and then you eat. So yeah, that's the advantage that we have. Oh, wait, actually I have something to add on. I feel like it's because somebody asked the question, what, what was it about like, if you come to America, what do you know? Like, what, what do you mean? I feel like things are very like diverse here. I know specifically we're talking about our own cultures, but I think, I think the food range is very diverse. Like, I love Italian food. Like my actual, my actually my favorite food is like I love Alfredo. So like pizza, like all those Italian foods. But then also like there's Chinese food, there's Thai food, there's Vietnamese food, there's soul food obviously, and then I'm probably missing so many. Oh, yeah. there's like Mexican food, it's Spanish food, Jamaican food. There's just like but so if you if you food. like want authentic like authentic versions of food mm -hmm. american not it because a lot of it's like americanized chinese food americanized like mexican food like it's yeah. all like very like yeah but i want to add on, yeah that's true like obviously like the generic things like I, I don't know if you guys know like chipotle is like that's not like real mexican food but there is places like that like people from those countries own their own like yeah things and that is where you would get like the real authentic uh, authentic like food but if you go to like something that's like worldwide or something like that like that well, that's not, touristy spot you're not gonna find anything right authentic, like that, so, like, yeah 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 that food's not gonna be like authentic. so which population yeah. dominates in uh in america like race or like ethnicity yes yes race which one i think I, white right yeah now? white people are um the or has them higher population then after that I think it's um black people and then after I think Mexican and then yeah, so on so on. on. I don't I don't know. I, I, where we live specifically, I feel like there's a there's a there's a pretty nice diverse I feel like it's just what area of town you're in. Like like if you go more near the south side you're gonna see a lot of like African Americans and things like that. But if you go more near like what side of town is it, I guess? Like the Eastwood West. or like the Upper West Side. Like this is like this neighborhood called Strathmore where I live. It's like a lot more of white people. Or if you go like more in like the outer towns, like, sorry, not to call you out, know, like Clay or like Cicero or like Tully or one of them. But if you go to like the North Side, there, that's the most diverse. Yeah, that's like that's where like the Africans live. The like, most like, diverse. Asians. The most diverse, um, the east side, I guess, is kind of the same. I feel like it's a lot of work. That's why I was saying, I was talking to a lady and I was trying to ask her, like, is the lead problem a problem in Eastwood? 
Oh. And she was not answering my question. She questions. Didn't. kept looking away from me. She was not trying to answer my question. Yeah, I feel I feel like oh, also the West Side. I think the West Side has a lot of like like Spanish people and Hispanics. Yeah. And yeah. there's like a really good authentic Spanish restaurant. Well, there's actually two. They're both really good. Like oh, but it like there's no like generic thing like we need to move here. Oh yeah, like New York, California, Texas. It's like I feel like outside of America, people like over glam, like over like people. They think like <laughs> they think like people. And well, I can't speak for you guys, but like a lot of the time when people like outside of America tells their views on it, they think Texas people like speak very like yeehaw, <laughs> like and New York. I think. It's oh like God. people like think that's like when we say we're from New York, they right. automatically think New York City. We're not in New York City. And they just think that New York City is so glamorized and so royalty. And then it is not. Like I have I go like at least maybe one, two days one every year. And it is not like what people make it to see. The streets are very dirty and there's rats everywhere. Everybody. I feel like the tourist area, like Times Square, is really nice though. You know, it smells like so good. I don't know, it smells so sweet. There, but like more of like the areas where people who actually live there live it's like it's kind of like old and like run down like that's what i think of it and the streets are so narrow i don't know how people do yeah that. the traffic is so bad it's terrible like if you have somewhere to be please leave like an hour more than an hour before we'll just start walking <laughs> yeah and i don't really know that it's california is not what it seems either it's not Oh, we can't. We can't. We can't hear you. You good? Sure. So, if you all say the most glorified city ain't good, which is New York, what cities would you recommend? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> that's, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a city that I've been to in the United States that I okay. Honestly, Florida. I'm gonna say Florida. What about like? Yeah, New Orleans too. But personally, I I've been to Florida, and I feel like if you go to like the tourist spot Orlando, it, it was like really nice. Or like I feel like there's so many nice places in that state, and that's what makes it so good. Like Orlando, Miami, Tallahassee, Daytona Beach. Like it's just it's a it's like probably I would say our most like tropical state because it's like right near the Bahamas and. That's what I would say. What did what were you gonna say? Yes. And I mean I've seen like people talking about like how that's a good place to visit. Um, yeah. Hawaii is like it's not well, I've heard there's a lot of over like population there and technically the US there's like there's a lot of drama with that kind of stuff. Like <laughs> they're, they're trying to stop us from going to Hawaii. Yeah. It's a, it's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Oh and like the natives to Hawaii don't want like there's too many people in Hawaii like which kind of understand yeah because they don't oh don't go there if you have a company I would say like a, a this is kind of a random city but I went here for like a conference I thought like Kansas City was like really nice like I don't know I thought it was really nice or I feel like Buffalo like oh, Buffalo yeah, York, like Niagara Falls it's like right by the border of the United States and Canada like you can literally like walk across it. And I, I don't know. I think that's one of the nicest yeah. where we, I think that's one of the nicest, honestly. And then how is, how is um, Hollywood? Is it a place for celebrities or? Hollywood is like tourist city. I went to Cali. We didn't really go there, but like, um, just from everything there, I feel like it's so touristy, like the Hollywood Walk of Fame and stuff like that. Like that's not reality, I feel like. There's like a really... huge homeless list, like homelessness problem there too. Like it's really, really bad. Like, they try to, I think they try to cover it up, right? Yeah. And they like put like spikes on benches so people can't lay on benches. And Instead they of, like, like solving the problem, yeah, they, they try like to kick them out. They like form the city around the fact that they don't want people sleeping like on the streets, but they don't give them anywhere else to go. They put like spikes on That's like benches. a problem just for like the entire United yeah. States, anywhere yeah. that's like popular. And I feel like instead of putting money into like getting spiked benches, you could put that money into building another shelter for people to go. Absolutely. Like, New York had that like new like train station or something. Yeah. It was like it was like a million dollar like whole thing and they had like anti-homelessness benches on there too and it's like if you had enough money to do that why not just 
fun more shelter housing for people. Yeah. While we thought like um Hollywood was this glamorous place, you know, where celebrities are <laughs> and everything. Oh my gosh. I low key feel like Hollywood is glamorous with celebrities, but Hollywood isn't California. Hollywood isn't like Los Angeles even. I feel like that's like the like number one tourist spot. So of course it's gonna be like nice and glamorous, but that doesn't reflect what the US is, I feel like. Because the U.S. is very diverse, like like you said before. Yeah. And more, it's very big. Yeah. Um, well, we have a lot to talk about. Um, we have an enemy, which is time. And from this entire session, I just realized that um, while we're, div we're diverse, sorry, while we're diverse, um, we're all unique in our own ways. Thank you to everyone for participating. Thank you to everyone on my side and you on your side, guys, as well. Thank you so much. And um, see you next week. We love you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.